It is Wi-Fi battle in time, boys. And as always, if you enjoy these types of videos, make sure to hit that like button. It's free. It only takes you a second. It really does help out the channel. Uh, I'm working with a brand new team today and just kind of one that was seemed fun to mess around with. Um, as my opponent has a pretty OU team, this gets some really big threats over there, and it's looking like it's it's going to be a pretty good match. So let's jump into it. So my opponent is going to go ahead and lead off with their Mammoth Swine, as I decide to lead off with the lad that has the sickest haircut in the game, and that is, of course, the Skun Tank. Also, he's got the smelliest ass. But um, I'm thinking I'm just going to go right for a taunt here. If it's lead Mammoth Swine, it's likely going to go for the Stealth Rocks. I can catch it with a taunt, and that is exactly what I decided to do, but of course this is actually oblivious and he does not give a shit about that taunt and then instead fires an earthquake at me in return and that is going to knock me down to five Pokemon right from the first turn, so you absolutely uh, hate to see it. So that was a misplay on my end. The earthquake was, you know, a secondary play, but I figured it's a relatively safe option just for them to get up their stealth rock. Um, but that doesn't happen, and now I'm just down a Skun Tank. So, I get a free switch into a Parasect, which is actually pretty sweet, as I really don't have any other options on this team to go into. Uh, really, this Mammoth Swine is kind of uh, quite the issue. But, I decide to just go into Parasect mainly because without the Stealth Rock up, I know I can take an attack with a Focus Sash, and then I can just go ahead and spritz some Mushrooms right on his little piggy nose, and that puts him to sleep, which is great, because with this Mammoth Swine asleep, it's gonna be a whole lot easier for me to deal with rather than if it was conscious. So, I decide, you know what, fuck it, I'm going all out on the Parasect here. Said literally nobody ever, except for me. <laughs> but I go for the Sword Dance, get them Pointy Boys out there, um, just trying to maximize the effectiveness of my, my Shroom Crab here. As now, I'm like, alright, I can't get any more crazy, I'm gonna go right for the Bullet Seed here. He does stay asleep, I was really banking on uh, the Mammoth Swine staying asleep for at least one more turn, and luckily he does. That is the luck of using a Parasect, probably the worst competitive Pokemon ever, and that does actually take care of the Mammoth Swine in two bullets. Didn't even have to bust out the full, the full, uh, the full clip on that bitch, he's just straight up dead. So, that is pretty damn solid because Mammoth Swine is a huge issue to the team, but unfortunately, uh, Flaming Monkey is about, you know, Parasect's arch nemesis, and I kind of just have to let this thing go down. As the U-turn does take care of Reginald, so, you know, unfortunate, but, I mean, Parasect kind of, you can't really ask much more from this thing. Uh, it got a Spore off and a Swords Dance and killed something, so, I mean, the Swords Dance was kind of unnecessary, but whatever, it was cool. So what's good for me here is he actually ended up killing me with a U-turn, which is pretty solid because that forces him to go into his Mon before I can choose my matchup. Uh, so he brings in Patrick Star. I decide Pointy Dog has a pretty good matchup here. Uh, I can get a nice hard-hitting Volt Switch, even if they do decide to switch out. So with the choice specs, even if this thing stays in, it's definitely going to die. It actually outspeeds, goes for the Hydro Pump, and straight up misses. So that, ladies and gentlemen, is why we do not run hyper-offensive Starmies with Hydro Pump, and instead just settle for the Scald, uh, because that miss there it does hurt. But good for me, Pointy Dog just goes ahead and kills that thing, gets tucked right back into the old back pocket to save for later. And uh, now I'm right back into the actual same situation my dude was in, where now I have to go into my own Mon, killing with the pivot, and he is able to bring in a matchup, which is going to be the Clefable against <laughs> the Flygon, which is um, horrible for me. So I do have to switch, but I mainly went into Flygon because I knew he was going to go Clefable, and this allows me then to just switch right into the shiniest doorknob in town. He's not dirty, you can straight up lick this doorknob if you want to. It's not recommended, but I mean, if you're into that type of thing, you can totally do it. Um, Clefable does go for the Calm Mind here, and that's actually not bad, because um, a Flamethrower is the only coverage this thing's going to have, and at plus one, it's not going to be nearly enough. Plus, I know my Iron Head is going to do close to around 50% to this thing, depending on the Clefable, so... Uh, I actually outspeed, which is probably the first time Registeel's ever outsped anything, and <laughs> I do not, unfortunately, get the flinch. Uh, but my dude is actually, in fact, getting greedy over here, going for another Calm Mind. Sitting at plus two special attack and special defense, that's kind of the last thing you want to see if you're the guy across the field from the pink blob. But luckily for me, I am in fact Registeel, so I'm totally fine with this, as unfortunately after Leftovers, it's not looking like unless I get a super nice roll on this Iron Head, it's going to kill. Uh, but I still have the chance for a flinch, it knocks him down to literally like two HP, and <laughs> he goes for uh, the Moonlight, which... Uh, it's just going to recover about half of his health, plus leftovers. It's looking like it's kind of in a situation here where this thing either has to uh, shit or get off the pot, as they say. Or flamethrower or switch the fuck out in Pokemon terms. Um, but I have no reason to really do anything here. I obviously cannot switch. Registeel's the only guy I want in here. I'm thinking about potentially setting up Stealth Rock, but I'm like, you know what? I'm, I just have to get rid of this threat. Clefable is such an annoying Pokemon, and I've had to deal with this thing for freaking 20 years, and I'm over it. But he actually goes for the Flame or the Fire Blast, not Flamethrower, and my dude's choice in moves has really 
come back to bite him because with that accuracy it does in fact miss and fuck it look at registeel out speeding and also dodging attacks my dude is quick as hell uh light metal baby so he actually ends up switching out saves the clefable for later as he goes into tangrowth now this this is a little bit of an interesting situation here mostly because we look exactly the same i never realized that tangrowth is basically a hairy registeel look at this shit we have the same we're doing we're the, we're the same dude it's insane i go for the thunder wave and miss uh, which is just karma coming back to bite me, but I mean, I guess I kind of deserve that. No idea how much that fire blast would have done, uh, but it definitely would have been good uh, for the Clefable. Regardless, it did miss, and now I miss my Thunder Wave, which really d isn't too big of a deal because paralyzing Tangrowth was just supposed to kind of cripple this thing a little bit, make it a little easier to handle. Um, but I do, in fact, get put to sleep, and now he's like, hey, knock it off, gets rid of my leftovers. I know that really the only reason why I have this Registeel at this point is to kind of just counter their Clefable. It's pretty much just the win condition against the Clefable. I did get it down to red. So I'm thinking, I'm just gonna stay in here, kind of burn off some sleep turns. Uh, if I can get this thing crippled a little bit, it could put me in a, a better position against it. Uh, but here he actually reveals that he does have the Earthquake, which knocks me to about half. Now I'm like, you know what? That seems like a good a time as any to switch into uh, the Swellow here, as he's likely just gonna go for the Earthquake and I can just bring in the boy and then, you know, force it out with a nice Brave Bird. Um, he actually ends up, to my surprise, making a double switch. We got a little little switch action here as he goes right back into the Clefable, which he probably wanted to bring in, hope for another sleep turn, get another Moonlight, and kind of just uh, try again for Fire Blast, I guess. Um, unfortunately, he wasn't able to take advantage of those of those Calm Minds, but again, as, as a Clefable not enjoyer, it's good to see. So, uh, he does actually end up switching, goes into Magnazone here, I predict that, and I go right for the U-turn. Magnazone is really the only switch into Swellow, uh, and it was a pretty kind of a slam dunk of a play here to just go for the U-turn. Now, this actually puts me um, in a way better position because now I can obviously save the Swellow for the Tangrowth. That's kind of my answer for that, and now this allows me to go into whatever I like against the Magnazone, which is going to be um, the Manectric. Because for whatever reason, Manectric can use Flamethrower, and with the choice specs, that is easily going to absolutely roast and toast my boy. Talking about some melted-ass metal over here, and down goes the Magnazone. So, everything's going relatively according to plan here, except for now he gets a free switch, and Infernape, of course, does outspeed uh, Manectric. Of course, at least most Infernapes should. I'm choice specs into Flamethrower, I cannot really switch, because I need to conserve everything I pretty much have left, and the close combat does take me out, so... Um, Manectric kind of did what it needed to do though, so I'm fine with uh, getting that kill because this does, of course, then allow me to switch into something again. Uh, so kind of a crazy offensive match here with like the minor stalemate of the Registeel and Tangrowth. I guess Clefable as well, but uh, my team is mostly hyper offense here with that with that doorknob just for support. But uh, I go into the free switch, which is going to be the Swellow, and he is going to save the Infernape for later. Goes right into the Clefable, says, fuck it, I've tried this Clefable today, and it's just not... It does not happen. So the Brave Bird does take care of this thing. I really should have been clicking Facade this entire time, as you'll see uh, in this match with Swellow, but I felt like being brave, I guess. Also, I still have the the Toxic Orb on this thing, where I should be running uh, Flame Orb. It's way more beneficial to be burnt with Guts rather than poisoned, because after a few turns, it stacks. And uh, fuck it. I mean, Swellow's not going to stay alive long enough to really... Uh, make a difference with that, but uh, he goes back into Infernape, does go for the Mach Punch. Now, I did not expect the Mach Punch. I just straight up expected Swallow to outspeed. Um, so I go for the Brave Bird. Again, I should have clicked Facade there. It would have done the same. It does take care of the Infernape, but what that does do is knock my own ass out, and with that Mach Punch damage, yeah, of course, that's what happens. So, uh, kind of a misplay on my end, and now I gotta kind of work around that. I really could have just clicked a whole other button and been fine, but, you know, it's a fucking way she goes sometimes in Pokemon, and especially since I was playing this match uh, live on stream. I'm like reading chat and dicking around, but uh, all he has left is, is this Tangrowth. And luckily for me, my Flygon does enjoy noodles, and I'm also a special attacking Flygon, which he did not expect. So I go for the Fire Blast, do connect, uh, which unfortunately doesn't actually end up knocking it out. Um, but luckily for me, he actually goes for the knock off, and now this allows me to just switch my move. And all I really have to do now is just click Draco Meteor to knock it out. So this is actually a great situation where using the less optimal type of Flygon actually paid off nicely. Because I was just if I was just the regular physical attacking Flygon, uh, I wouldn't be able to do shit against this Tangrowth. But luckily, special attacking Goggles is able to come through, and that does take care of the Tangrowth. So that is going to be the end of the match there. I thought that was just a fun one. Kind of interesting to use uh, a new team 
a little bit more of an underused team rather than the kind of like NUPU stuff. But regardless, had a really fun time. Wi-Fi battles are fun and I'm going to keep doing them as long as I'm having fun and you guys enjoy. So let me know what you guys thought and I will see you next time. Peace out.